Thank you everyone so much for joining our webinar from Paper to Power Player on achieving, achieving enrollment success uh, using an online enrollment platform. My name is Amanda and I'll be your host today. We have some great panelists here who are going to talk to you about um, online enrollment and how we can transfer you from Paper to Power Player. I'm going to keep the webinar on mute so that we avoid any background noise. If you have any questions at all, you can put them in the question box below. And during some breaks, I will read them out loud and our panelists will answer for you. And don't worry if you miss anything, we'll be emailing a link to the recording and the slides to all of our participants and anyone who missed the webinar after we conclude. For now, I'm going to turn it over to our first presenter, Lauren. Um, hi everybody, thank you for joining today. Uh, my name is Lauren Nichols. Um, I'm a client service delivery manager here at Benefit Express. Um, I have taken part in two implementations for some larger clients that are, have moved from um, a paper format of enrollment onto our uh, platform, My Benefit Express. Um, so one of the uh, cases I wanted to share with you today is regarding a health system or hospital system out in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, they actually have 11 main locations that were treated um, very differently based on um, eligibility and um, payroll, things of that nature, um, all on different HRIS systems. And they, since their existence had always um, administered everything via paper, um, so they came to Benefit Express not only for an online enrollment solution, but also with a couple pain points that they were looking to address using our system. Um, so some of the things that they were able to accomplish through automation, um, onboarding and communication. So being able to communicate with their employees in a consistent manner um, throughout the year, not only during new hire orientation and whatnot, but just letting them know what's available, um, meaning benefits, what they're eligible for, what they can enroll in, anything that can be accessed on My Benefit Express. Um, so we were able to actually work with them on a couple enhancements to their process using our online platform um, through our communication module um, and now they're feeling like there's more of a consistent, consistent approach throughout the year and being able to communicate with their employees. Um, EDI, so electronic um, eligibility management was a big one as well. Um, being able to take that over here at Benefit Express was a huge um, relief on their team. Um, they were keying everything in manually, handling everything off of paper enrollments, and as everyone knows, there's always some risk for error there. So we were able to take that process off of their plate in its entirety and handle all eligibility <coughs> enrollments as well as any discrepancy reporting with vendors, etc. Um, and then the third main pain point, annual enrollment. Um, it was a huge work effort on their end to be able to track everything via paper and make sure everything gets updated in a timely manner. Moving to an automated system and using a more automated approach made that entirely more easily for their team. Um, and actually the overwhelming amount of positive feedback from the employees was uh, great to hear after our first open enrollment, which just occurred this last fall. Um, their population actually was very reliant on their HR staff for things like open enrollment and eligibility um, and actually logging into you know, a system was something that they weren't familiar with, but being able to transition from paper onto our platform has also relieved their HR staff um, throughout the year, not just open enrollment, now that we've gained their employees' confidence and that culture is shifting a little bit more, we really truly are an extension of their team. Um, um, before I move on, is there any questions so far, anything that I've spoken about? I do else? have one over here. Oh. What is the group size, what are the group size qualifications for EDI fees? We act, this is Rachel Marchfield, I'm the Director of Client Services here at Benefit Express. Uh, we actually don't have a threshold in order to create EDI file feeds to any of the vendors. It's all about what your requirements are, how many plans you're offering, and what the mapping looks like, which typically means it's something that you would like to report on. But the size of your population is not a, a requirement or an essential piece to whether or not we would offer that service. Oh, sure. <laughs> Let me move this too a little bit so it's not blocking. Oh, I'll unplug us. Okay. Pretty good. And 
then um, last thing I just wanted to know, um, really the implementation process coming from paper and coming from another automated system, whether it's a TPA system or whatnot, it really isn't that much more involved. Really, the way we're getting your data is a little different, meaning we would actually reach out to your carriers to receive your data to, to backload into our system. But the implementation process itself is pretty standard, regardless if you're coming from paper or if you're coming from another system. Um, I think a lot of times it's, it's misunderstood that there's a lot more involved on the client end or on the HR team if you're coming from paper. But in, in reality, the implementation process is very similar. conference a little bit, we're going to keep the conference muted so that we avoid any background noise, but on your webinar screen there is a question box if you have any questions for us. But for now, let's move on to Anne. Um, now we're going to hear from Anne Burkett, who's a national practice leader of HR technology over at USI, um, who's going to discuss how a broker can help in this transition. Anne, do you want to take it away? Sure thing. So, um, Thank you all for, for joining us this afternoon. And, and Lauren, could you pop one more slide for me? Oh, sure. Thank you. So one of the things that um, I thought it would be important to mention today is when you go, especially from a paper solution to an automated solution, and I think the process probably is, still should be somewhat similar if you're already on a tool and, and looking to move tools. You need to talk to your key users. You need to understand from them maybe where any backlogs are, any challenges that they currently are facing, because you might be able to accomplish more than, than what your specific process is if you involve maybe some key line managers or um, even key users where, you know, and discover some things that may be challenging for them. Because these tools nowadays, the technology out on the market, and then all the services that go with it, they go, they go a lot further than maybe what you realize. And so I think it's important to go through that process of just you know, examining what, what you're doing today and where you think you can get the biggest bang for your buck as far as automation goes. And then taking that one step further, and don't forget about those little things. Um, you know, how is the process going to work around evidence of insurability? Is there a way for the system to alert your employees that say, you know, the example I put on the screen was, you know, they're running out of time to do their open enrollment. Is there a way to reach out to them and, and push them along to, to, again, to help you be more automated and more efficient? Uh, and we can go ahead and skip to the next slide. The, uh, the other thing is, you know, when you are building out a tool that's supposed to help with automation, lean on the experts, especially if you're coming off of paper. There's a lot of what I say, you don't know what you don't know. And so it's hard to know what questions to ask. So from a technology perspective, it's important to engage your vendors to Benefit Express, if, if that's who you were to select, be sure that as you are going through implementation that you're asking all sorts of questions because they have done this before. They've helped clients come off of paper. They've helped clients come off of other solutions. And they're going to have a lot of ideas on how to help you be more automated and to most benefit from utilizing the system. But then when it comes to your, your broker or your uh, benefit plan questions, I would really point those towards your broker. You know, in other words, be sure you're talking to the subject matter expert for those items so that they can help walk you through, and, and you'll end up with a better end solution in that way. Your broker should be able to provide a lot of details on all of your benefit plan contracts, and that's typically where all of those little eligibility items are. And when, especially when you're coming off of paper and going to an automated solution, you need to be sure that you've got all of those little tidbits that make a difference in how the plan operates on the back end. And I know somebody asked the question about carrier files. That's where it gets very important. If you've got data that's going to flow out of the technology system over to the carrier, it, we got to be sure that all of the structure and, and all of the 
the details kind of behind, you know, the underlying details of how that plan operates are built properly in the system so that that data flows correctly to the carriers. Um, that's really important. And, and your broker should have all of that to provide uh, for, for implementation. And then I know somebody asked the question about, you know, what size, you know, will carriers take a file? And so that was something that I did want to bring up. Not all carriers are created equal when it comes to accepting data out of technology um, solutions. So the fact that Benefit Express can send the file to probably just about anybody, the carrier may not be able to accept the file. So there's some carriers that have very specific rules around that and others that take more standardized files. And there's a lot that goes on on the back end there. But the important questions that I would ask if I'm in your shoes is how long is it going to take to get those things set up? And am I going to be responsible for managing eligibility to the carriers before those files go live? So again, try to think of all of your process, every, you know, every little checkbox that you have today, and, and be sure you understand how that process is going to change with the, with the technology. So you can push forward. Thank you. So, you know, kind of from my perspective, coming from the broker world, um, you know, be sure <laughs> that you take the time to provide, that you, that you allocate time for implementation is, is really what I'm trying to say there, is the vendor's going to need some information from you. Um, they'll, you know, in some cases, they'll be able to get some data from the carriers. But ultimately, you're going to want to be sure that we've got good data going into the technology before it starts going to carriers, for example, with carrier files, because the, you know, the old language of garbage in, garbage out is very applicable. So, so I would be sure that you and your team carve out you know, the extra time and typically you know, weekly, you know, a couple hours a week, to try to help manage the flow of data and, and be sure that all of that's going well. And, and certainly, don't underestimate the change, um, well, actually, that's supposed to say change management uh, that may need to occur, especially coming from a paper environment. This is going to be very different for your employees and how you communicate it and, and really roll it out could make a difference in how successful that first time out really is. Um, and, you know, so think about that. And again, I think, you know, the folks there can help you with how to communicate and whatnot. You know, you're, you're going to have some trusted advisors that it's not the first time they've done it. So lean on your, on your partners to help. But last, and, and in my view, this is really important, I would recommend when you implement for a new system, do not implement it with the first transaction you're going to do is open enrollment. I would highly encourage you to implement off of that cycle. And the benefit that you have is that you're able to take new hires through it, employees that have changes, say they get married or have a baby, and they're, you're able to point them to your system, and then you've, you've got this trickle of, of work that's happening in the system. So as an administrator, you're getting used to it. The employees, in those cases, really don't know the difference. And you're able to get much more comfortable with the system before you get into open enrollment, where typically at that time, all of your employees have to go in at the same time. So I highly recommend that as just being a, you know, a, a best class practice for, for implementation. And I think that's my last um, slide, so if, if I'll pause and see if there's any specific questions for me. All righty. Um, again, if you have any questions for Anne, feel free to type them in the question box on your screens. If not, we can move on and we'll have time for a couple more questions at the end. I don't see anything at the moment, so we'll go over it again after Rachel. Great. Hi everyone again, this is Rachel Merchfield, Client Services Director here at Benefit Express, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Benefit Express product offerings and our platform. And 
what it can do for not only our clients and their HR representatives, but what it can do for the employees and kind of what we work through here internally at Benefit Express. So as Ann had mentioned, timelines are extremely important in any implementation, whether the client is going from another you know, online platform or from paper, knowing what your needs are, where your employee population is at, what kind of other processes and activities are going on within your company, it's really important to align that with your benefit offerings and when you go live, um, especially if you want to ease into it. You want to get a feel for what your employees are looking for and what kind of drastic changes are going to be needed to your for your populations, such as going from on-site enrollment assistance via, on paper forms to assisting them with online enrollment, sitting down with them, going over the web services, and things of that nature. Another item that's really important for us is just differentiating and determining who, who's responsible for what in the in the initial implementation phases. So if your paper, if you, all of your information is on paper, essentially the first question that any HR representative is going to say is, well, how do I get that information to you? Do I send you a huge packet of information? Can I send you paper paper forms? Can you key that in? How does that work? And I'll give you an example. Um, a few years ago, we actually implemented um, a, a township, for lack of a better way to explain it, um, <laughs> in our system. And they went from paper to online enrollment, but they also did not have an HRIS system where all this information was housed. So in order for us to obtain employee information, what we did is we had them send us a large printout of their data that we were able to scan into our system, place into the appropriate data fields, and help them audit. So we provided them missing pieces of information, items or employees that fell out of eligibility buckets where we needed to research that. It helped us identify gaps in their current processes where we could move forward with evaluating what's the best way to do this going forward. Um, so it, again, it, it goes back to who's really responsible for it, but how do I get you that data? What does it look like? What do I want as a client or an HR representative to be able to report on later? And how does that interact with the website? How do I get that all together? Um, we will always go through data requirements with our HR representatives and our client teams. We will work with the HRIS team, the vendors themselves, and here at Benefit Express, we take the first shot at going through all of our requirements documentation on your behalf using summary plan descriptions, benefit highlights, SBCs, and rates documents, including the documents you give to your employees, it, such as your benefit guides, because we want to know how you already communicate to your employees, because we would like to continue to be an extension of our clients. We don't want to differentiate between the client and Benefit Express. We want Benefit Express to be a part of that client's services and be a part of that client's um, needs, addre addressing those needs for their employees. For all of our all of our clients, Benefit Express is a full service suite of, of offerings under the, the software system. Not every service has to be used by each client, so our clients have the choice of saying, I do or I don't want to use this piece of the site, or maybe I want to start using this at a later date. Um, our HR support, support services are supposed to address client pain points, so a large portion of the implementation also focuses on what else are you feeling trouble with today that we can help you address through an, a more automated process. Um, it can't just be that you have to work with paper and key in the data. There's always that end-to-end -end service that has additional points and, and, and pain points that we can help address. From there, once we know what those pain points are, in order for us to be really a collaborative extension of our HR services, we will help offer guidance and consultation on the services and the administration processes within the site. So just because you do it one way today doesn't mean that that's the best way, or it might be the best way, and Benefit Express will work with you to figure that out. 
once you get those things all in a, a single location, the, the Benefit Express system then becomes a system of record. It allows you to report on that data. It cuts down your timelines for researching certain issues, um, and which essentially then saves the company money because you're not spending time having to pull together specific information or research issues with the vendor because that's what Benefit Express is doing on behalf of our clients within the, within the portal. Um, we can, it also allows us, excuse me, it also allows us to administer extremely complex rules through automated processing. So those things that everyone dreads, like configuring EOI, identifying whether or not somebody needs to fill out the form, did somebody attain a new age band and they need to have a rate change, um, is, an, is a dependent coming up to age out and we need to drop them from coverage and offer COBRA. All of those things then become automated and centralized within a single, a single point of contact where all of the processes are then housed and administered by the Benefit Express team from end to end. With all that said, it also comes out that you have not only a single system of record, but you also have data protection and security for, your cli for our clients, for your employees, and it reduces errors in processing going forward. Any questions from a client perspective what moving to an online portal can offer? We don't have anything in the question box right now. I know that you have a couple of screenshots of yes. our V5 system to go over. Um, so while Rachel's showing those, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them below. Um, either for Rachel or for either of our other panelists. So right now you should be seeing from our new platform uh, the new site. So what we really did is we kept the functionality, the ease of configuration, the ease of HR administration on the back end the same as it is today. What we did is we put a new face on it in order to allow our, allow our clients, employees, a self-service portal that was easy, easy to navigate, presented them information that's specific to the employee, and allows that employee to locate information on their eligibility, their current benefits, and any changes that they're eligible to make. So from an employee perspective, moving from paper to an online portal allows HR to offer that self-service portal directly to employees where they can access all of their information regarding eligibility, enrollments, elections, deduction information, and really lets the employee become an educated consumer uh, on their benefits. They're, just, they're not just enrolling in a plan because they feel they need to or because the Affordable Care Act says they have to obtain a plan. What we do is help our clients provide the information in a, in a digestible format that allows them to make educated decisions on their benefits, where their money is going, and how their benefits are being administered. And in the end, a happy employee means that we have happy clients, which makes a happy Benefit Express. This other page is just another example of the information that's consolidated for the employee. In this case, it's basically the hub of all of the information the employee would need to know about their specific benefits they're currently enrolled in. Um, it offers them, again, information about how to contact the vendor should they have specific questions about whether certain things are covered. It does have a, a link to additional plan information, including highlights for co-pays, deductibles, and other high-level uh, high questions. And in the case of anything like a health savings account or other reimbursement accounts, it can include information on their balance. So what we're trying to do is provide that centralized self-service portal to keep educated employees using and informed on their benefits. Thank you so much, Rachel. Um, you missed two more. So if you have any questions, we'll be here for another few minutes. Please just en enter them in the question box below, and I'll be happy to read them out loud for any of our panelists. Otherwise, if you'd like to see more of the system, you can check out our website.
website at benefitexpress.info or just email sales directly at sales at mybenefitexpress.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We do have educational webinars every, approximately every two weeks. Our next one is a week from Tuesday and we'll be covering controlled group attributions. Uh, we hope to see you again soon.